Okay, so we'll look at the third assignment. Okay, um, you can possibly run into issues with your code, and it's a good idea to just try some things out. For example, in your printf, if let's say you forget to type an S or an F, meaning you, you forget to type the conversion code completely. So I just deleted the letter F from 10.2F from this guy. He's not gonna like it. And he says, you're gonna see this kind of thing, exception in thread main, conversion equal to one. But then when you see all this, how do you know where the problem is? See, it tells you, it prints out a little bit of the method names, internal method names, or you can call it the gobbledygook. And then it tells you it's on, the problem is on line 32. So now when you, when I click on the line, it's a link and it highlights the line for me quickly. That way I can point out, I can point to that line and look through it carefully. Okay. So put the F for float back and I'm back in business. Now it's also important that if I provided four conversion codes that I provide four values of the right data type from left to right. Meaning I'm expecting a string, a float, and then two strings for this guy right here. A string, a float, and then two strings, right? So let's say if I don't provide a string, will this cause a problem? Error exists in the project. Actually, it makes it red. Bob cannot be resolved to a variable. Bob is unresolvable, as always. What if I forget about providing four values? I only provide three. It runs, but it says this formatting specifier does not have a value in line 32. So if I click on it, it, again, it doesn't give me, it gives me a runtime error, not a compile time error. What is the difference between compile time error and runtime error? When things start to turn red in the compiler, that's compile time error. When you get these kinds of messages in the output, that's run timer. <coughs> Problem fixed. So, in a perfect world, you would get your code working the first time around. So, make it a perfect world. So, looking at the so I guess what I should do is take the stuff from Eclipse and put it for your online notes. Okay, let's look at the third assignment. So I've got two programs for you guys to work on. And I know you'll like it. 
Now you have to write a program to create a customer bill for a company. The company only sells five products. TV, VCRs, remote control, remote controller, CD player and tape recorder. Which store is that? If you guys want to modernize this program to more uh, current things, you, you're welcome to do that. Your Apple devices, your iPhones, and whatever else you want. As long as you have at least five. So you can search and replace them. I guess the only thing that's valid is TV and remote controller. The unit prices are those. So you can make up your own unit prices, that's totally fine. Okay? The program must read the quantity of each of the assignment, of each of the equipment purchased from the keyboard. What's the hint here? Use the scanner methods. And since you're reading quantity, you're gonna end up calling next int method. So. It then calculates the cost of the item, subtotal and total. Factoring in eight and a quarter percent for sales tax. So, so input consists of integers, and you have to present the output in a user-friendly way. Can you all see that in the back? Maybe not. If not, you can open it locally. But this is what the output should look like. This part is a prompt. You print that out with system.out.printf. And then you prompt the user to enter an integer value. Then you print another prompt. Read, read a value. So you basically got five prompts. So the way the program would look like is like this. Prompt and usage of next int from scanner class. For five value. And then Before this, of course, you'll need to declare scanner and all well, all required variables. Have I shown you how to create constants because I'm expecting you to use constants in this program? We use the word final, the one that we will have at, in March. So you can say, Final a final in sales tax is equal to eight, and when the value is declared final, means the va that means the value of the sales tax cannot be changed. So, so you declare your variables and constants, then you prompt the user for values. Then you write expressions to compute total for each. Total price for each, for each item. You also compute subtotal, total, I mean, sorry, Subtotal tax and total. Then you print it out using system.out.printf. And I highly recommend using the example I provided in class. 
for printing things out in columns. Because I'm expecting that things will look like this. We will say quantity one, description TV, unit price, whatever, 350 bucks. And total price, 350 bucks. Five VCRs, and they're they're now like five bucks each. So that'll equate to twenty five dollars. So you see all those values for the floating point values. All the floating point values should write a line. So I I should see five rows. That's what the dot, dot, dot is for. And then we print subtotal, which should also line up. Tax. And then the total. That's the program. That's one of the programs. Any questions on that? Pretty easy? Okay, one nod in the class. This will be online? Hmm? Will this be online? I can put it online. Sure. So the next thing is this guy right here. We're trying to do centigrade to Fahrenheit. So we're gonna write a program that prompts the user to enter a temperature reading in centigrade and then print the value in Fahrenheit. And then you do it the other way around too. After that, you prompt the user to enter Fahrenheit and it converts it to centigrade or Celsius. The reason I'm giving you this project is so you could deal with integer division. If you say 180 divided by 100, what happens? What's the value? It's one. If I say five by nine, that is zero. If I say 244 divided by 50, excuse me, 244 divided by 50, it's four, okay? The fraction part <coughs> in integer division is truncated. I want you guys to be aware of that, all right? Do you like uh, quizzes for extra credit? I guess I have your attention now. We could do one today. Extra points. Bag them. Right? So. so that way you get a taste of what kind of questions I like to ask too. Then you're not surprised in your midterm or final. like there are chocolate chip cookies in the room. Extra credit is like that. Okay? So be aware of this and of course the approach in this program is simpler than the previous one because all you do here is what? You, you know, read in 
floating point values and print out floating point values. Of course, most of your code will go in main. Attempt this program and submit on time. Questions on assignment three? Yes. Midnight of the due date, yes. 